I'm pretty sure I've worn this shirt in at least eight videos, but that's okay. It's comfortable. Anyways, hello. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you're new here, my name is Dana. I'm so glad that you decided to come by. That was repetitive. But today's video is going to be kind of like a February favorites. I'm saying kind of because I just uploaded my every day go to makeup favorite products. So this video is more lifestyle concentrated. There still are a few beauty products, a lot of hair care products, hair styling products that I love that I still wanted to talk about. But if you're looking for like strictly makeup, I'll go ahead and link the previous video right here. It's good. Check it out. There's some doozy products in there. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off with books. Quickly wanted to jump in while editing and say that I absolutely suck. Oh, this person didn't close their trunk and all their groceries. I think they figured it out. I absolutely suck at giving a book summary without like giving spoilers so I decided to just completely skip giving you guys the plot and I thought I would just like tack a little synopsis of the book as I'm talking about it trust me I'm doing us both a favor the very first book that was recommended over and over again whenever I was looking for book recommendations is the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo this is by Taylor Jenkins Reid I'm about to sound like a real negative Nelly and I'm sure people who are diehard fans of this book are probably like punching the screen right now like no Dana you don't know shit but it's not that I disliked this book. I think if I went into it as like a blind read, I would have appreciated it so much more. And I think I was just expecting so much more from all of the rave reviews. I'm not saying it was bad and that I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed it, I found it predictable, and I thought it was overrated. <clears throat> Sorry, had to say it. Okay, next up we have Verity by Colleen Hoover. This is a book that has gone straight up viral on TikTok. In fact, I believe like book talk of TikTok has just blown up Colleen Hoover. She's been around for a while. I know I've read like one or two of her books in the past. I never picked up Verity. I borrowed this one from a friend. She fosters puppies, which are always like so freaking cute. And they chewed this book up, which I actually like really enjoyed. There was something satisfying about like picking apart, for instance, this page right here. The little teeth marks like just punch little holes in it. Verity was another book that I found to be predictable. I don't know if it's just because I've read so many thrillers or from like all the Dateline episodes that I've watched and Lifetime movies and podcasts. I didn't think it was a twist at all. Everyone was like, oh my god, the ending, the twist, mind-blowing. I've talked to several of you guys on DMs already just because as soon as I mentioned that I was reading this one on Instagram, so many of you guys were like, tell me what you think as soon as you finish reading it. I read it in like less than 24 hours, so clearly, I mean, it's a very fast-paced read. I think that's where like a lot of the appeal comes from. Plus, I know a lot of people, a lot of y'all out there, some nasty freaks, love just reading like graphic sex scenes. To me, this almost took a page out of Gone Girl and just like threw in additional like vivid, I don't know if I'm gonna get flagged for this, like BJ details. Colleen Hoover loves her some of those scenes, but there was an ending that I thought in my mind that would have been a little bit, I don't even wanna say better, but. I, the ending that I had predicted in my mind was why I thought everyone was saying that it was a twist. I'm guessing maybe a lot of those people who thought the ending was like so exhilarating and like a mind bend are people that don't read thrillers quite as often. I read it so quickly, but I think more so because I was dying to see what the ending was since everyone like freaks out about the ending. In case if you are curious, I don't want to give anything away. That's why I'm terrible at book reviews. I feel like I end up like telling the whole story instead, so I'm gonna be very short and sweet, but there are a ton of trigger warnings in this book. In fact, I really appreciated one of you guys messaged me over on Instagram and was saying how, like I had mentioned, infertility issues in the past. There's definitely very sensitive topics in here, including like infant abuse. Another thing to do with like, pregnancy, I don't wanna like straight up give details because that would give away some portions of the book. It's about a woman named Lowen, I think Lowen Ashley. She's an author, she's kind of struggling. And then Verity is a best selling author who has a series coming out that's supposed to have like nine books in the series. She suffers from an accident, so they're looking for someone to take on the additional three books. This woman goes and lives, Lowen, the like suffering author, goes to live with Verity's husband and son in their home and kind of like researches her life to continue the series on in the same of tone that like Verity would write her books. And there's just like a mystery that unveils. I think people are just diehard fans of Colleen Hoover. So they read that and they're like, oh my God, yes, all the things. But it's a fast paced read. It's an easy read with a ton of trigger warnings, but a predictable ending. That's what I'm just saying. Okay, next up we have Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. I'm pretty sure Kubica, Kubica, isn't she the, yeah, she wrote The Good Girl as well. I read that one. This one is about a woman that goes missing in a smaller town and then shortly after 
a woman and her six-year-old daughter go missing as well and then 11 years go by and the little girl reappears and it's just an unraveling mystery of where she was what happened who done it sort of thriller. I did enjoy that. And the very final book that I read was Karen Slaughter's Pretty Girls. I've heard a lot of people recommend The Good Daughter by her as well. Pretty Girls, I don't know if I'll be reading Good Daughter just because Pretty Girls, I need a break for a bit. It was very dark and disturbing. It was something where I just felt like I needed to shower and pray a ton afterwards because it was just a lot. Pretty Girls is written from three different viewpoints. You have the dad, which his, yeah, I was gonna say journal entries, but they're definitely more like letters. And then two sisters, Lydia and Claire, their older sister had went missing. Years ago, there was no evidence like of where she disappeared. The parents, the entire family are just having issues coping with it. So the book is going on about how the two sisters live their lives, how they deal with the tragedy from the past, how they come back together. Another girl goes missing and the sisters are convinced that it's linked to whatever happened to their older sister as well. It's dark, it's disturbing, it's gruesome. If you are not into like any sort of gore, do not read it. I had no idea it was gonna be that intense. I don't mind like domestic thrillers, but it was just very, very graphic. So there's a heads up. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into a little bit more like happier things because even just thinking about that book again, I kind of just have the heebie-jeebies. Laundry detergent, I know, random. Tyler Candles Glamorous Wash in Diva is one of my all-time favorites. It is more of like a splurge item because it's laundry detergent, but once you try it, it's just so good. It's so nice to have like your blankets and your towels. I do wash some of our clothes in Diva, but I typically reserve it for bedding just because it is a stronger scent. But recently I decided to try the scent Trophy. I just got a smaller bottle just to test it first and I really like it. This one has more of a citrusy, fresh vibe to it, whereas Eva is very warm, slightly powdery, floral, but like in the flower bomb sort of floral note, where it's like warm and ambery and a little bit musky. However, this guy here, I was disappointed in. I don't know, I just expected so much more. This is by Capri Blue, their Volcano Concentrated Laundry Detergent. I loved the Volcano candles for years. This does smell exactly like it, but it just does not linger. If you've used Diva or just any of the Tyler detergents in the past, you could wear your clothes three days in a row and when you walk by someone, they will still ask you like, what perfume are you wearing? What is that? Or maybe they'll be like, ooh, that's way too much. But this stuff is like potent. It really like just latches onto your clothes. I was hoping that Capri Blue would do the same thing, but it didn't. I even went in with like a larger amount than usual. It's nothing like the Tyler Candles detergent. I did actually mix a little bit of this into my spray bottle that I use whenever I'm mopping. Like if I went in with Tide water and just like a few drops of this, and that really made the smell linger throughout the house. But for whatever reason, as a laundry detergent, it's just not quite as potent as I want it to be. Moving on to one random food product. If you don't have H-E-B near you, I'm sorry. Keegan randomly bought this from the seafood case at H-E-B the other day, and we've already used this much of it. <laughs> this is the H-E-B Fish Market Coastal Blend. So whenever I looked on the H-E-B app, I think there was like two or three other variations, but get Coastal Blend. So it has garlic, rosemary, oregano, and cayenne. We have used this on beef, on chicken, on fish, on vegetables. On vegetables is definitely my favorite. My mouth is watering. Mm, just thinking about it. It just smells so good. But I think since there's rosemary, the salt isn't quite as intense as some other blends that you get that typically do come with salt. Sometimes like if you go in with a little bit too much, it's like, oh, that's way too salty. The oregano and rosemary definitely tone it down. It's just delicious. We're obsessed with this stuff. We've been using it pretty much at every single meal. All right, moving on to hair. If you follow along on Instagram stories, you already know all about this curling iron. For several months now, I've had my eyes on the Bioionic Long Barrel Curling Iron. I feel like every single hairstylist uses it. They rave about it, but even at the professional discount, I was just like, I don't wanna spend that much on a curling iron. So I was on Amazon a few weeks ago and I just typed in Long Barrel One Inch Curling Iron. This guy came up and had good reviews and you guys, I freaking love this thing. I'm so glad that I did not bite the bullet and purchase the expensive one. This is under $30. When I purchased it, I think I got it for $25 because there was a $5 clickable coupon. So this is from the brand Hosa. There is temperature control. I believe the lowest it goes is $300, but it goes up to $425. That's hot. maybe even $450. I think it's 425. I have thick and coarse hair and I still keep it at like 375 to 400. It glides through my hair beautifully. The clamp is the perfect 
pressure weight. It's not too like flimsy and it's not too tight where it like clamps down and you can't glide it down the length of your hair. If you have medium to long hair and you hate like reclamping and readjusting, get a long barrel curling iron. Easily one of my most favorite Amazon purchases to date. So today was a hair washing day. I washed my hair this morning. I'm typically a nighttime shower, but I hate how flat and clean my hair is on first day hair. So I decided to actually like go in with a diffuser today. I barely had to go in with a curling iron. All I did was curl these front pieces here just because they weren't really laying right with everything else. They were like stick straight. But what I use just to get some wave in here, this is a cheap product. Although I've been using this one for a while, I really haven't messed with the texture spray too much. In fact, when I first tried it, whenever I received it with the Bondi Boost Deep Waver, I wasn't a fan. But applying this cocktail onto damp hair and then going in with a diffuser, if you have any bit of natural wave in your hair, this is such an easy hair day. Especially if you're someone like me where you just hate first day hair because it's too soft and it's too clean. Try out this cocktail with a diffuser, you'll love it. It's the Christoph Robin Daily Hair Cream with Sandalwood. It's supposed to be a moisturizing, anti-split ends, anti-breakage. I just went in and applied this from mid shaft down and then sprayed the sea salt spray all over and just used any sort of diffuser attachment that you have. And I was able to get this. For dry shampoo, I kind of got burnt out of Amika. I will still always love that dry shampoo. I'm sure I'll probably go back to it whether it's next month or the month after, but I have to consistently rotate dry shampoos. I get bored of them or I feel like my hair gets too used to them. Back on the Moroccan oil at dark tones. Love the scent of this one. It's not quite as volumizing as like the Living Proof, that's what I was using, the Living Proof dry shampoo or the Kristen S one, but the scent of it and just how soft it makes my hair, I really do like. If you've ever used Moroccan oil products, you just know their signature scent. It's so good, so good that I had to purchase this. This is a cheap product because I didn't get this to end of February, but I've been using it every day since. This is their fragrance mist. It says it's for hair and body. It's not the longest lasting mist. I just think with hair mist, they're just lighter when it comes to scents, but I can definitely smell this one. I would say for maybe like two to three hours after that, it does dissipate. Moving on to two products that I just wasn't that impressed with. I feel like I just sound like such a negative Nancy in this one. So we have the new Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Concealer. This is a very thin, liquidy formula. Very, I would say light to medium coverage. I much prefer the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer over this one. That one just feels more hydrating with more coverage. And even that one is more of a natural sort of finish, but this just very liquidy. I did not like the texture of it much and I just didn't really like the coverage it offered either. And then for the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum, I do like this much more than the Maybelline one, but kind of like with the books, I felt like this got so much hype. That's one thing I will say. I think TikTok definitely overhypes makeup. They just make things sound absolutely incredible. Sometimes, yes. In fact, a lot of the products will be really good, but this I feel like was given away too much credit. It's not bad, it's just nothing that great either. I don't think it's worth the price at all. I feel like there's other drugstore concealers out there that are miles better than this one. For instance, the Catrice True Skin Concealer, so much better than this one. A complexion product that I love. This has very mixed reviews. People either love it or hate it. I personally loved it. I did hear from several of my favorite creators saying that they noticed a different coverage from the different shades. Like two or three people had mentioned that, which I thought was interesting. I got mine in the shade five neutral. I really do wish I would have gone at least one deeper. I just have to go in with a cream bronzer when I use this. It's the Charlotte's Beautiful Skin Foundation for your best healthy looking skin every day. I'm not gonna say too much about it because I have an entire dedicated review of this foundation. I'll go ahead and link it here. It's a foundation that I'm wearing today. I just find it to be so lightweight and comfortable on the skin. I heard some people say that they thought like sunk into their pores. I didn't have that issue at all. One thing that I will mention though is that my favorite way to apply this is going in with a pump of this and mixing it in with some of the Auric Glow Lust in Pyrite. That combination, I just feel like gives such beautiful, like natural but dewy looking skin. It's just a very comfortable formula. And then the very final product. I'm not saying that these are cute, but if you're just looking for a super comfortable cloud-like slide, these are from Amazon. It's from the brand Cushion Air. I'm typically always a true nine, but I got mine in a 10 whenever I was in Miami. Beth and Shannon, I'll go ahead and link both of them down below. Beth, this is an amazing style. She's actually a model, a plus size model with, I believe, LA models. 
absolutely stunning so talented when it comes to just putting clothes together i'm like how i wish i could be like you she's so amazing with body confidence and i adore her she was wearing this and then shannon was also wearing them shannon is a hair and makeup artist also incredibly talented and i was like can i just try one of those because both of you guys are wearing them like i want to see what all the hype is about you guys it's like walking on clouds they are so squishy and comfortable beth had also said that she was normally a nine i believe and she sized up to a 10 a nine would like it would probably fit your foot just right your toes might hang off a little bit but i just felt like once i tried on her tens it just felt more comfortable on my foot they come in so many different colors there's like a pink pair an olive pair black white like i said they're nothing like that cute but they're just really comfortable i definitely feel like they look better on than they do just like this if you have any book recommendations let me know down below i'm sure you're probably like um no the ones that i love you just so no but it's not that I dislike them, it's just that I thought a lot of them were overhyped. Okay? Okay. As always, thank you so much for hanging out. If you haven't already, I would love if you subscribed. If you're looking for some more content, you could always give me a follow over on Instagram. I'm always there hanging out with y'all on stories. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you have a good day and I will see you next time. Bye.